Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and I'm uh, going to do a little video here on melting points of ion compounds. So if you're watching this, likely we've already covered this, or you're trying to get some information on how to determine the melting points or to categorize melting points of ionic compounds. So previous to this, you should be able to already identify an ionic compound when you see one. So with that being said, um, first off, we have a... Um, a bulk crystal here, which is that of an ion compound. What breaks when an ion compound is melted? Well, energy is going to just shake these particles faster and faster and faster as I add energy into it. I'm going to break the attractions be between all these particles, and there's a lot of them. So it shakes, shakes, and then also it breaks. This is just an attraction between, between a positive cation and a negative anion. And um, we, we could call this Coulombic attraction, and it would be called, that would be correct, Coulombic. And in this case, the very specific version of the Coulombic is just called an ionic compound. So, an ionic bond. If someone asks you what breaks when an ionic bond melts, um, well, it would be an ionic bond. So, that being said, the stronger this particular Coulomb attraction is, then the more energy is required to break it. So the more temperature is required to break it. So things that have higher melting points require higher temperatures to melt and therefore have stronger bonds. Weaker, weaker bonds have require a lower temperature to melt them. This is the Coulomb law thing here, Coulomb's law. And you'll see that the this is the two um, charges of the cation and anion. Um, and I have it labeled slightly different here, but you'll see kind of what, what I'm looking at here. Um, this is the charge. We could even change this charge of the cation, charge of the anion. Okay, that's really how we look at this. Um, this is a little bit deeper look at it. We'll see that in a moment. Okay, so first things first, um, for, for determining the melting point of a particular substance, um, we're going to use two things. We want to make sure we're clear on what these are. And let's go ahead and add in here a page, and we'll show this. So the first thing we look at, let's say for NaCl uh, versus, say, magnesium chloride, just to get, to get point A to point B. Um, the first thing we're going to do is the size of the charge. And I would encourage kids to write the ionic charges above them like this. This is plus 2, minus 1. So it is the size of charge. That is really what's important uh, right off the bat. Bigger charges tend to cause increased um, Coulombic attractions and therefore increased melting points. There you go. So I'd expect this guy to have a higher melting point than, let's say, this one, because it has smaller charges, higher melting point. If I wanted to find an atom that has a higher melting point than magnesium chloride, I would find an ionic, an ionic compound that has larger charges. So like with my periodic table, I could find a common ion, let's say like aluminum, which would be a plus three, and you could use the same atom again, chlorine, Cl. That would be a 3 here, minus 1. So the charge uh, differential is really what matters. You'll see it come through here with force equals the charge of the cation times the charge of the anion divided by the distance squared between them. And that's just kind of how we look at it. These are the charges of the ion right there. Step 1. So identifying the charges. What happens if these charges are the same. Then I go to my next piece. So, again, our mind is going to have some sort of decision tree happening. So, first thing I look at is charges. The second thing that I look at is going to be atomic, the internuclear distance. I'm going to call it that. Internuclear distance. I'm going to abbreviate right here right here because it is written out right here, internuclear distance. So with that being said, um, it comes to the other part of Coulomb's law. So the force of attraction between two particles is going to be equal to the, 
the charge of the positive, the charge of the negative, divided by the distance between the two. This is the internuclear distance right there. Okay, all right, so let's get more onto a, an atomic level, okay, as far as what's happening. And this is going to help us hopefully shine light on what, what this distance means. So when I have a particular atom, okay, and one atom is going to just sort of be coming up, you know, moving up along closer and closer to another atom, what happens? Well, we get these forces that are both attractive and repulsive. Okay, so you'll find, I mean, what, are, what, you know, what are the attractive forces? What are the repulsive forces? Well, here, okay, so let's pick a different color here. What are the, what are the repulsive forces happening here? Well, electrons don't like each other. They are the same charge. They repel. All right, that's fine. Uh, and you can see that this would also repel over here, this guy. All right, so that being said, this is our repulsive forces, electrons repulsing other electrons. All right. Well, what about attractive forces? Well, the only attractive force is this proton attracting to other guys' electrons. Now, it's attracted to its own electrons as well. That's why it's there. And this nucleus attracting all the way over to this guy's right there. So what happens is that we have a balance here between, this is uh, the, the nucleus of one atom attracting to the electrons of another one. So what happens is, is that as the atom gets closer and closer and closer, and I'm just going to erase these lines quickly so we can start refresh. Uh, so as the atom gets closer and closer, there's a balance between these attractive and repulsive forces. Now, if the repulsive forces actually um, are greater right from the start, well then, this if the, if the attractive forces outweigh the re, repul if the repulsive forces outweigh the attractive immediately, then the atom is just going to go away. It's not going to. So that being said, we we start out with the attractive forces kind of winning at first. The att the attractive forces win out at right away at the beginning. Okay, and so that causes this attractive force is going to cause this thing to sort of attract to the other atom. These, these attractive forces went out. And then, uh, as it gets closer and closer and closer, um, we start having a situation where, okay, where as it gets closer and closer and closer, the repulsive forces start to pick up, okay? And at that point, um, we get a little bit of a balance. So as, the, as we get closer and closer, the repulsive, they pick up. And we get a point where these two here sort of balance each other. Okay, we're a bit of a what we call equilibrium. To where we have a certain amount of repulsive force and we have a certain amount of attractive forces. I didn't change the color, but a uh, certain amount of attractive forces. We have attractive forces here. And these are all sort of balancing. Okay, so in this case, uh, what do we have here? Okay, in the end, we have a a balance between attractive forces and repulsive forces. And that distance is going to be seen right here. Okay, So when we have a essentially atoms sitting here, okay, like this, what forces are stronger? Well, in this situation from here to here, two small atoms, I just got to be able to get from here to here or from here to the electron here. I not, actually has not electrons over there, but this is the, where they're located, okay? Relatively short distance. A bigger atom has to get from here all the way stretch out past its own ele electron clouds over to the other electron. So at this point, bigger atoms have larger internuclear distances and therefore make that attraction weaker. So we talked a little bit about some of the basic stuff about how this thing sets up. But the, but the fundamental situation here is that um, when you have two magnets, okay, for example, and these two magnets are right next to each other, all right, they're, the, the attraction's relatively strong, okay? So this attraction between, right between here is relatively strong between two magnets. As I take my magnet and I move it away from each other, it gets that that strength 
gets weaker and weaker and weaker. So if I have an atom that's, that's really far apart, then the attraction between these two particles is relatively weak, and I can easily just pop it off some more. If it's relatively close, then it's got a strong attraction. And for me to pull that electron that magnet away, I really have to kind of yank pretty hard to yank that thing off of there. This is inherent to the molecules. Smaller molecules are relatively close to each other, and they have relatively strong attractions. Bigger, and that's because this nucleus is relatively close to that guy's electrons, which is the backstory. Okay. Again, how much depending on how style of a learner you are, you might want this backstory picture. Uh, otherwise, rather just memorizing this. But bigger atoms, okay, these guys, um, again, if we have two of, you know, a big guy and a, and a small guy, it's got to reach a lot farther over, much less if I have a situation where, let's just say, I have two big ones. Let's put that on here, okay? If I got, okay, two big atoms, one next to the other one, all right? Now, let's... Look at this distance. Okay, now two big guys. How are these going to be able to attract? Well, I need this proton to attract all the way over to the other guy's electrons. And I need this guy to attract all the way over to this guy's electrons. Bigger atoms tend, there's always a little exceptions here, but bigger atoms have larger internuclear distances and therefore have weaker attractions. All right, so this is the secondary deal here. So um, first thing we do is we, we look at the charges and then we look at the internuclear distances. Now built upon this is you need to have an idea of how the relative sizes of atoms, okay, and that's not covered in this little video. Next, let's try uh, our worksheet. Okay, so this is our worksheet that goes into our, our workbook, and here's the answers to it. So um, right off the bat here, let's I'm going to summarize some of these things and go a little bit faster through this. So um, it says here, what are the factors that you need to be aware of? Um, when you determine the multiple points, so number one, uh, charges and the size of charges. And then number two, after that, is internuclear distance, okay, uh, or the relative size of atoms. Okay, next, it says. What is the match the chemical to its melting point? Okay. So in my mind, I'm thinking through my little thought processes here. I have a big one, a medium one, and a little one, relatively speaking. It's still pretty high temperatures. All right. So my big one, I want to look for things that have high charges. So I'm like, I would just uh, write the charges above them. All right. So you, you can also always stop these this and say, okay. Try your own. Okay, so what I got here? I got plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, and then I have plus two, minus two. All my charges are different. So that means my highest charge is going to go to that one. And my secondary charge, this guy is going to go to this one. And my lowest charge is going to go to this one. Okay, so here's an alternate question. Okay, this one I'll probably add into the worksheet. All right, um, let's look at, let's say, um, let's look at NaCl. Take a moment and say, okay, where would NaCl, I guess let's do it this way, Cl, where is AcL going to fit in here? Okay, take a moment, think about that. Okay, well, first of all, it's got positive N1 and negative 1. So it's relatively close to the 987. 
All right, so 97 um, is going to be, um, is it going to be bigger or smaller than the 987? Well, next look is the size. Okay, well, the chloride is the same, which what they're typically going to do is they'll have one of them be the same. The sodium atom is a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. Okay, so that being said, that means the attraction between is going to be a little bit larger, increased attraction. Okay. So I would expect this thing to be a little bit bigger than 987. Okay, maybe it's tipping out at 1,000 or 1,100, something like that. Okay. Um, next one. And there are always exceptions to things, but um, these are although there are, there are variables involved, but um, this is the main ones. Draw a board diagram each substance. Okay, so let's do that. So lithium, I'm going to draw these two and these two, I'm trying to show how they connect, kind of like how we, how we did a little bit ago. So lithium has its positive, and then it only, and the lithium plus, this is lithium plus, only has one energy level. That's it right there. It's a little wonky, but it's it. Fluoride minus one has two energy levels. So I'm going to go F minus one, and there we go, and here we go. Sodium is going to be have two energy levels because it lost an electron and then the fluoride is one two as well we're trying to get you to realize the internuclear distance here this distance is smaller than this distance so that means in general these this nucleus is farther away than this guy's electrons and this nucleus is farther away from these guys electrons on average so which is going to have a, have a higher melting point Okay, well, they had the same charge, which is why we're kind of looking to do this. Minus one, plus one. And therefore, the one with the higher charge will be the one with the shorter distance, which is going to be N, A, F. Okay. All right. Next one. Arrange the substances in order from lowest to highest melting point. All right. So this is plus two. This is carbonate. There's a whole substance. You may have to look that one up on your ion sheet, but it's a minus two. And I would also uncrisscross this thing. This is two and two. This two came from the plus two. Minus one. Okay. Plus two minus one. Plus three minus two. So number one from the one from lowest to highest. So the lowest is going to be, well, it's one of these two guys. Okay. This guy is a little bit bigger than this one is. So this is going to be a little, these atoms will be a little bit farther apart. Therefore, this is number one, the lowest melting point, followed by this guy a little bit higher because of the lower, smaller internuclear distance. Then I have this guy's next, which is three, because it's got a lot, little bit higher charge. And this is the highest charge, which would be number four. And that is where our video ends.